Welcome to Build Stuff and Bikes, Episode 2, Bathroom Fitting Tips, What Did I Get Paid? In Part 1, we discussed the preparation of bathroom fitting and covered the toilet, tiling, screen and all the preparation ready to do Part 2. In Part 2, we can actually show you how I fit the tiles, the screen and toilet and what I actually got paid for the job. Hold tight. Good morning, Day 2, Thursday. I've got some matching tiles for this so that's going to be hoovered off and leveled got a plan for that self-assembly I've got to do the wall cabinet the toilet the fill valve is this side so I'm gonna to have to adjust the plumbing which is a pain because I'm gonna to have to get the water off possibly I'll have to match it up so that's that um, so today I'm going to tile that wall, sort this bit out, do the floor, match the toilet up, try and get the, the centre of the floor done. So this is all, when you get another le uh, level of, of curdy board on there or Jaco board, 6mm. All right, and I'll glue that onto there. Then I'm going to run a small, I managed to get some tiles exactly like these, so I'm going to run a lower level there because obviously the old one was done across really badly and then I'm gonna fold it round and tile it down here so we keep that reveal and then I'll tile flat up to the bath with silicone there tanking paint I think I'll do and the only problem is where they've not bought the tiles down properly there and they're all chipped it's not going to look brilliant but the grout, I'll try and level that a bit with a chisel, but the ceramic. So once we've got a level in round there, it's not, I can then tile flat. So we'll get a nice flat with a very slight fall um, because we've got the shower screen, so we can't have a big fall. You know, at the end of the day, a shower, you should have the bath butted up right under the tiles. Okay, so the shower should have been fitted this end with the taps so that you, I mean that's not even good anyway, it's all failing. So I hate it when I'm having to do a sort of a repair, but we've got a shower screen going in, the curtain's going. So I'm gonna get on with doing that, hold tight. Got the wall cabinet there, bit of tile trim if I need it. The nice screen. Uh, here I've done my little batten, so I'm doing two mil. My set out is, again it's, a, it's a bit odd, but the only way you can really get this with these tiles, these are beveled, 300s, okay? I don't really want to cut that bevel there because it will be too thick already. It's already a bit thick. So I'm, I'm going to do straight bond. So one, two, and then just a little cut there. I'm not brick bonding it because it's straight bond on there and it has to sort of <laughs> match. So, uh, so I'm just going to do one, 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 all the way up. Now what I've done, I've done my batten, this is the space of each tile, I've checked it carefully with 2mm spaces. It's easy to draw it roughly but it can run out and then when you get to the top, we've all been there, there's a little slither or it's not worked. So that's the exact, with the 2mm gap there, place that on there and I've checked it and I've run it all the way up and I know that that's my spacing. So I need 33 tiles. Three, Two, one, two, and a cut. One, two, and a cut. And that's, we're only doing that little bit of the wall there. So that's what I'm gonna do on that. So I'm gonna go mix some adhesive up. Hold tight. Coffee. S1 adhesive. Uh, and then start tiling. So two more spacer. That's that little cut in the corner. And I'm just gonna do that all the way straight up. Cause it's just integrating it with that. But it'll make it look a bit nicer. And then I'm going to tile this edge here. So that's the plan. Um, yeah. When you mix your adhesive, if it's a bit, I've mixed it, it's new adhesive, so it's a little bit thick. Okay. So you don't need to back butter tiles, really. But what I suggest is because if you press the tile on there now and pull it off, it's hardly any con, it, it won't stick to it. So it's slightly too thick. So just a slight bit of back butter in it. It's good practice on any tile and just ensures that contact. 
because you could have them coming off. Do you know what I mean? I like a dry, a thicker adhesive because it doesn't go everywhere. So I always back butt the tile a bit, okay? Always trowel your adhesive onto the wall if you can, rather than on the back of the tile because you won't get the right levels. It'll be out. You need to practice getting it like that. I'll show you in a sec. Um, and uh, I think that's it. Oh, and a little tip as well. So I'm cutting these these small bits. It's the only way I can set this out based on the size of the tile and we're doing that. So I thought I'd just hide it in that corner. And when you come in, because we're all about visual tiling, the door's next to me here. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so when you come in, you won't really see that. The toilet will stand out, the tiles will stand out. That little cut will only be sort of here, but the, your first impression will be fixed tile. I need to do a straight bond because of the other tiles, it'll look really messy. And that's the best way I think to set it out. Customer will be happy. So I'm gonna trowel the rest of these on the wall. You can see my lines have worked perfectly. I checked beforehand that the tiling on the left was plumb and this wall was plumb because otherwise if that had started to run out to the left on here and I hadn't checked and I started there, it's especially with straight bond, it's ruined because you'd have to, you can't do a slither. So you must ensure that that is not running out. Okay. You could move these across slightly, but it would start to, it would really show. Okay. So there's another tip, another top tip today. There's, there's so many. So these little cuts I'm doing there, because my tile cutter hasn't got a, a mark thing, you can use tape, but what I generally do is I draw it, can you see? Hang on. I draw a little uh, prep on there, use green tape, painter's tape, then I know exactly where to mark it and you can get the cuts exactly the same on each. Some tile, my bigger cutter has a, a gauge I can set, or you can put a bit of tape on there. Um, and then as you look up, if that this wall I've already checked, this wall is running out slightly to the right, only about a mil, which is fine. I can just start increasing the, the depth, the width of that tile cut all the way up. Okay. When you cut these, especially a thin cut, I'm having to mark it a little bit heavier on the cutter. I use my diamond pads. I think that's a 120, just to clean up the edge. Otherwise, this edge here will show with grout marks, especially if you're doing black, we're on white, so we're fine. So, yeah, so try and sand them down. You really need to do a 120, oh, this is a 60. Yeah, 60, and then a 120. So, but that, with black grout, it's gotta be perfect. I'll use a grinder and polish them. So, some tips for you there. Thank you, hold tight. So, what are you doing? Look, just a bit like that. Okay. All right, just a thin layer. You don't, you wouldn't need to normally on a wall. It's not in a wet area, but that will ensure because the adhesive, especially if it's been traveled on the wall 10 minutes, it might start to dry and skin up. So that will ensure it doesn't fall off. So we're using a powdered adhesive. It's an S1 flexible adhesive. You mix with a paddle mixer and this allows for the tiles to stick thoroughly. Always inspect the tile first, make sure there's no chips, so that will bite you. That's all you need. Okay. Okay, I'll get the rest of these done. So tile down there. I've got the tiles in there, it's not going to be pretty as such, it would be okay. Um, and then I can tile along here later tomorrow. So that's that, um, and get that flat, then the tray will be, a screen will be able to go on. Um, that's the tiles up there, all good. Looks a bit, you know, it's not normally something you normally do with these sort of tiles, but it's the best option really based on that, um, and the size of them. So I've just done straight bond there. Once this grey would look good. Set out on the floor, so these are the floor tiles. So, I've used my laser level, I've squared the rooms are never square, but I've, it's only small, so it's not critical on any of the cuts. So this is my key tile I've decided, so it gives you the best layout, which I'll talk about later. So I'm gonna get this bedded down. You bed this one down and leave it for like five, ideally rapid set, but I've still got some, some standard set adhesive. So I'll bed that one down, and then you leave it for 20, 30 minutes so it doesn't move. 
and then you can work off that tile and I know I'm square that way, that way, that way and you'll see later how I've set it out for the best cuts, I hope. So I'm just going to have a coffee and get this tile down. So 6mm trowel, no sorry 8mm trowel, uh, no 6mm trowel based on the 300s. Um, no, I will do a te uh, an 8. I'll have a look because I don't want to go too high because of, we don't want to step up on here. We've done the floor well, so all right, hold tight. So I started tiling the centre of the room now. I've set it out and used my key tile to come off and I put that down and let that dry for about 20 minutes so it doesn't move. I'm then using 2mm spacer clips. I'm using the wedges from CDC. They're really good. Uh, so I'm troweling a 6mm bead uh, of, sorry, 8mm bead of adhesive, 8mm trowel. I'm back buttering the tile and then I'm putting the clips in. Remember we've got a lovely flat surface now because I used the hardy board. So I'm working my way backwards from the front of the bathroom. So I've got an egress route. Do you want to lock yourself in and can't get around the tiles as they dry? I'm using a rapid set adhesive, 8mm trowel. Um, I'm troweling out on the floor, making sure it's nice and equal. Remember the S, the SBR uh, um, floor has been primed, the hardy boards, and they've been taped down and jointed. Again, I'm using the CDC uh, wedges and 3mm uh, wedges and clips just by hand. Uh, these are only 300 by 300 tiles. So I'm troweling the adhesive evenly and then back butter in the tile to allow the full contact because this is a floor tile. Without the full contact, you might get hollows under the tile and then if something drops on them, it will break the tile. So you need full contact of adhesive. So I've used clips. I didn't really need to on a three mil great gap, but floor's pretty level and they're only 300. If it was big, large portions, I definitely would, but I thought I'd use them and use them for a while. Um, gets rid of any lippage. That gives perfection. Three. So today, I'm gonna. These are how you get the clips out. You just kick them sideways. Look, and if you've done it right, they just break off. Look. So it's important to keep all the grout lines clean when you use these clips. A lot of people, they overuse the clips to level, which you shouldn't do, and they don't keep all these clean. So all the all the adhesive is now stuck there, and the clip breaks higher up or chips the tile. So when you're using them. They're not an excuse to level the floor. The floor has to be level. Or we have to work from the datum line. So when you kick them, everything should be clean. There shouldn't be any adhesive wrap around there if you've done it properly. It takes a bit of practice. But beginners use the clips to try and level the tile. And for example, this floor was level enough to use 300 tiles. If I'd used 600 large format tiles, I would have had to have self-leveled it. I'd have had to have poured some self-level because the tolerances were too far out, okay? So, and then obviously you've got to remember not to kick these, which I've put in for today's tiles, which is difficult, I know, and I'll probably break a few. Got to make sure you put them in now, cause, uh, last night, because otherwise you won't be able to use them against here. Um, and what else was I going to talk about? So today I'm going to kick these out so I know that where I've tiled, I'm going to cut, dry lay all the outside tiles and then they'll get rapid setted in. Then I won't be able to work in here for a couple of hours, so I'll I'll put the vanity unit, assemble that, plan the shower screen, that kind of stuff. I've got to go off and do a little job playing the door, I think. So, And then I'm going to also fit the tiles in here and then that'll get adhesive will be, sorry, grout all around here and uh, silicone around there. It's not perfect. I couldn't sort of tank it properly because um, it's hard to do it afterwards. Again, you're supposed to do it on, this isn't been tiled on, uh, this has been tiled on plasterboard, okay? Should be tiled on a, um, a weedy board, a hardy board, and then tanked in this area all around here. But because it's on plasterboard, I can't really tank it. I could paint tanking paint, but it won't really work because it's not sealing up against the sides properly. So just to do it properly, proper adhesive, proper grout, it should work for quite a few years, but it's not how I would do it. This should be, I can't put weedy board on because the reveal will be further out. So I've just SBR'd it and I'll pack it with adhesive, grout, do it properly and it should be fine. The bath isn't moving 
uh, it's been installed correctly at least so that's that so that is the plan and then we can start planning the toilet I've got to move the coal feed uh, I've got to probably have to chase that in the wall because we're going on a close couple toilet now the old uh, toilets come out and we might have to uh, paint around these edges because the, the modern toilet will be smaller so that's to be done and then grouting these up uh, yeah so a busy day hold tight it's out I've inspected every grout line remember this is an S1 adhesive so it, within sort of I did this what 10 hours ago so it's still not fully cure but you can stand on it but if you clean these out now because by this evening the, the adhesive has gone so hard you'll struggle to get it out now if you don't get the like in here if you've got any bits of adhesive that are protruding above the grout or line or in line with it like there okay if you don't get them out now that will be too hard tonight and then when you grout it it will mix with the grout and it'll affect it although we're tiling with off-white grout but imagine if you're using a black grout with a white tar you would have bits of white there and it would ruin your and you swore there it would ruin your grout so you've got to make sure that like in there make sure that is below the grout line clean them out thoroughly and now because i'm working in here today i'm gonna sheet off these and then i can see where i've tarred where i haven't and it protects them because these are uh, you're the finished tar now People stand on them and scratch them and everything. So we'll sheet this off, this bit. Then uh, I know I can work here. And then, so what I generally do with tiling, like I showed you yesterday, I do my key tile. I do my centre parts with rapid set, or if it's the evening, I'll do a standard set. Uh, and then today, I'm going to dry cut all around the outside, and we'll get those in with a rapid set. Uh, and that means the floor's ready for grout tomorrow and I can get on with a few other bits, plan the toilet, etc. See, I can walk on these now, today, so I can dry fit the toilet as well. So it's all like planning ahead, really. So I've cleaned the grout lines out before the adhesive goes too hard. If you can see bits in there, can't avoid it, but it's at least below that edge. Look, there's a bit. Okay, that would, by tonight, be so hard to get off, it might damage your tile. So you've got to really inspect it. Look, just there. Got to clean that off in a minute with a rag. And then I'll sheet these up. Hold tight. Top tip. Show you how I do my cuts up against, say, a bath panel. Um, let me see if I've got time to put this down. So, what you do is you put a tile, you've probably seen it already. So, yeah, you put a tile on top of a tile. So, it's like scribing. So, you get exactly the same. Then you run it over for your grout gap. Okay, you've got to watch it. These do bend a bit, but you weaken them, but that's the problem with it. So if you look, that is now my grout gap repeated there. Okay, you can eye it a bit more, that actually. So, okay, that's my grout gap. Now I put another full tile, if you can see that, on here, right up against it, okay? Sometimes it breaks these clips, but that's the only problem with it. So that's bang up against it, all right? Now you take out just a mill back for your, to match it up. So it's nice enough to, if you look there, you've got just enough to get a nice silicone bead in there. You cut, you pencil mark there, cut to the left of the pencil, okay? Because you want to keep up to the pencil mark. So you mark with a little dash, all right? So let me show you, like so, okay? Now, so we keep all this tile will be what is going in there. Your factory edge is there. The pattern carries on the same. Okay, and that will, this bit will be your waist. So I've got my mark now. I can remove my full tile and that'll be used for the next one. That's my waist. But again, I can use that elsewhere because I've got a factory edge there. This will be my tile. If you lifted this up now and plopped it in there, it will be perfect, which I'll show you. So I cut it on the straight cutter. I'm cutting slightly to the left of that white, the pencil mark, because you want to keep the pencil mark, and then that should fit perfect. Let's see. Okay, what I use is my 60 grit, clean the edge. That it makes it better for silicone in and just tidies it up. You can grind, 
So let's try it. This is live, it could be wrong. Let's see. Let's see how good it is. There you go, beautiful. There you go. So, right, that's carried on the pattern now. Factory edge um, and nice silicone. You need about a mil minimum to get silicone in there. You don't want it too tight, uh, but you don't want it too wide because it looks awful, all right? Because we silicone up against. To be fair, I might even just grow it in there because no, our silicone. Um, but it's a nice strong bath, so you can get away with grouting really. So we'll see how that goes. Um, right, hold tight. They're all dry laid now. Describe the tiles up against the skirting because we're not undercutting it. Normally you'd fit the skirtings over the top. So all I've done is add about a mill gap around. So because you do the center of the tiles first, like I said earlier, and then the key tile that you work across, that you put in and leave half hour so it doesn't move, you know you're going to not run off your line. So you can see uh, the layout is lovely. All big cuts all round, okay? On the wall, that was different because of the way the tiles had to be straight bond, the size of the tiles. So I just did the cuts in that corner. But again, as you look at that, as you come in, it's it's nice. What the hell's that? House and mask. So uh, I'm going to mix up the rapid set now. The, now I, the beauty of it is I can stand in the middle on all these tiles and I've marked it look with no nonsense hard surface protector so I know I can put stuff on there not damaging them and walk on them and I can clearly see what I've got left to tile so I can get these down now uh, those areas I might have to just back butter um, just do the tile and I sort of back butter the hardy board the opposite way around so I trowel on the tile and I just put a thin layer on the hardy board so that the, you don't have to press down too hard with the adhesive. So I'm going to have a cup of tea, mix up some rapid set and see if I can get these down before the rapid set goes off. Lovely, so what I'll mix up is, it's about one square metre of tile to do. So that's one litre of water in first and then you add the powder afterwards. So normally it's about four and a half liters of water to a 20 kilogram bag of adhesive. Okay, so we're doing about a square meter. Most, at uh, six mil trowel, the adhesive will cover a four to five square meters on average because your back butter in a bit and it's a floor. I can't really trowel properly in there because these are the tiles were fixed yesterday, these ones. So I back butter sort of the hardy board to give that, that instant contact, okay? Especially if you're on rapid set, we've only got an hour. This will start to skip, thicken up in a minute. So rapid set, should have been white. Oh, I don't know, got the wrong one. But as long as I keep the tiles clean, it'd be good. So then I actually back, I comb the back of the tile instead. So it's a reverse of what we did with the centre tiles because of access. Okay, so I'll comb on this, the trowel, and then put it down and then run my clips in. Okay, hope that helps, thank you. Self-assembly. I messed up the vanity unit. I thought it was built. So I had another hour and a half. There's so many bits for a bathroom vanity. Should have made one. Lesson learned. Unit. So toilet now. I'm gonna start getting the toilet together. There she is. Got this on offer at City Plumbing. They're about 300 new. I got it for 60. It's good, isn't it? Um, yeah. But I had to build, get all the bits. Um, right, so, and then, uh, today, that's just going off, that was rapid set. So tonight, I'm gonna finish tiling that area and this. And that means in the morning, I can kip all the clips off, sheet the floor, and start matching the toilet up, grout that area and the bath area. And hopefully by tomorrow evening, I'll have the door planed, the toilet in, that area up there grouted, and the bath area. And that means Sunday I've just got to come back and do a bit of silicone in and tidy up. Um, so yeah, it's gone on a day extra of all this. But we're getting there. So that's the end of part two. Watch out for part three where you'll see me finish your bathroom looking like this. This is a finished article and then I'll go through the amount I got paid for this job. Hold tight. Please like and subscribe.